Hey, everybody, real quick before we get into the Season 4 recap of Servant, if you need a Season 3 recap, I put a tab in the upper right-hand corner. Just click that. That will also lead you to the Season 2 recap, and that will lead you to the Season 1 recap. But Season 4 picks up a few months after the incidences at the end of Season 3. Dorothy is in rehab. The road to recovery has not been easy for her, but the good news is she's on her way back. In fact, that day, she's poised to come home for the first time in weeks. It hasn't been all bad for the Turners, though. Sean's show is doing great. Gourmet Gauntlet is set for another season, and he is the star of it, because he has basically become the Philadelphia version of Gordon Ramsay, telling everybody their food sucks, throwing plates, and the crowd loves it. They've got merchandise. They've got cardboard cutouts. Sean Turner has become an absolute star. On this particular day, though, Sean and Julian have gone off to pick up Dorothy from the rehab center. This is leaving Leanne at home alone to get the house ready for Dorothy's return. Leanne throws a cake in the oven for Dorothy, and then she remembers that she bought Dorothy some flowers, but they're out in the car. She runs out to grab them, but when she returns home, she notices that the door is open, and she definitely closed it. So she enters the house on high alert, and she was wise to do so, because somebody from the church has snuck in the house. Leanne is able to fight them off by hitting them over the head with a pot and fleeing to the car. But she's also pretty confused because the homeless encampment near the park has been keeping an eye on her, really protecting her. But they missed this one. They dropped the ball. Although it wasn't their fault. They were forced to leave the park after the police scooped them all up and dropped them off at a random location. Leanne frantically texts Roscoe as to where they are, but Snake grabs the phone and explains that it wasn't their fault. And when she says that a neighbor must have called the police, Leanne says no, it wasn't a neighbor, it was definitely the church. As Leanne is sitting in her car, looking all over and seeing people that she suspects are from the church, she tells Roscoe, Snake, and the rest of the group, just get back here as soon as possible. I'll be able to fend these people off in the meantime. She then tries to call up both Sean and Julian, but no luck there. They both send her straight to voicemail. So this is on Leanne to get back in the house, or just out of the car. At one point, it seems like enough time has passed, so she decides to start making her way out of the car. But she does see a hot dog vendor who's on his cell phone. He looks innocent enough, but Leanne's fallen for that before, so she grabs a pen as she makes her way to the house. But when Leanne gets distracted by a bicyclist and she looks up and the hot dog vendor is nowhere to be found, that's when the hot dog vendor strikes, showing his true colors. He is, in fact, a member of the church. And Leanne tries to fight him off until eventually it becomes deadly. She stabs him in the neck with the pen. A woman who's jogging and passing by notices what happened. And she doesn't ask if Leanne's okay. Instead, she goes to check on the guy who was stabbed in the neck. Leanne is kind of frozen, watching this woman checking on the guy who just attacked her. But the woman is also a member of the church. With one hand, she is checking on the guy. With the other hand, she's grabbing some oils. She turns around and throws them in Leanne's face, blinding her temporarily. Leanne quickly tries to make her way back into the car, but in doing so, she drops the key fob underneath the car. This gives the woman a little bit of time to grab Leanne, but Leanne is once again able to fight her off. It's as if members of the church smell blood in the water because a bunch of them come out of the woodworks, surround the car, and start banging on it. It takes Leanne smashing on the horn, which draws attention to them, to finally get them to leave. Basically, these people come out when the street is empty, when no one's looking at them. With Leanne safe in the car for the time being, she splashes some water on her eyes to try to get her vision back, and she thinks she sees Aunt Josephine sitting in the back seat, but it's only for a second. When she gets her bearings together and she notices that the street is clear, she hops out of the car, grabs the key fob, and gets back in and starts the vehicle up. Before she can pull out, though, she notices an old car pull up on the street, stop, and a man get out. The man isn't alone, though. There are two twin girls standing in front of the car, watching him. This mystery man walks up to the driver's side window and starts talking to Leanne. He tells her, you must come back. It's what's best for us all. We don't want to hurt you. But Leanne, never once looking at him, replies, but you can't hurt me. I'm not who I used to be. I'm something more. And there is nothing that any of you can do to stop me. He then draws a triangle with two lines coming out of it on the window and backs up from the car. But at this point, there are a lot of people standing in the street watching her, and they're all from the church. Not only that, but there's also a lot of smoke because members of the church have stuck a bunch of leaves in her exhaust pipe. They're trying to smoke her out. 
In her quest to get out of the parking space, she never even noticed it until it's too late. She starts choking on all the smoke. She finally looks in her rearview mirror and notices one of the members of the church literally sticking leaves in the exhaust pipe, so she decides to back the car up, pinning him against the vehicle behind her. She still, however, is stuck in the vehicle, and it still is filled with smoke. She needs to do something, and that's when you get a reenactment from Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Pigeons suddenly attack everybody that's on the street. Now, members of the church are so focused on getting attacked by birds that they don't even notice that Leanne has opened up the skylight to get some clean air. Now, one member of the church does notice this, and he does go and attack Leanne, but right away, he himself is attacked by a bird. These pigeons quite literally scare the members of the church off the street. When Leanne finally gets to the front steps of the house, that's when Snake and Roscoe show up and ask her what happened. And she doesn't tell them. She just says, it's over. You can go. Leanne heads in the house, cleaning up the mess that she caused when she fought off the initial attacker, and then continuing to prepare for Dorothy's arrival. A short while later, the ambulance drops Dorothy off, wheeling her into the house, and Leanne does say hello, Dorothy, but Dorothy doesn't even respond to Leanne, doesn't even look at her. Instead, just telling Sean, take me upstairs. Later that night, with Sean attending to Dorothy, after Julian puts Jericho to bed, Leanne asks him, what do the doctors think? And he says, with spinal injuries, it's hard to say. Best case scenario, if she continues with the PT, she'll be able to regain most of her mobility. Worst case, I don't even want to think about. Leanne, though, is optimistic, saying, well, she's home now. She'll get better. Julian isn't so sure, though. Once Sean exits the room, Leanne quickly asks how she's doing, and Sean says she's resting. But when Leanne offers to go check and see if she needs anything, Sean stops her and says, I just don't think that's a good idea. She needs space from all of us. He then tells Leanne goodnight, and he shuts the door on her. Leanne is standing there pretty shook. She's dumbfounded. She doesn't really know what to say. She feels bad about what happened to Dorothy, and she wants to make it right. She wants to help out. She even baked a cake for Dorothy, but it's clear that her help isn't wanted. But when Sean closed the door, a light bulb in the family basement bursts and another crack appears. Except this time, the crack doesn't stay in the house. No, this time the crack bleeds on out into the street. And this crack is huge. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.